Today, our chairman will smoothly lead this process where our junior ministers and our commissioner of tourism will be sharing their views on one prepared topic, and that will then be followed by our mystery topic. I now turn over the proceedings to the chairman, Mr. Francis Alexander. Yes, thank you. Good morning to everybody. Um, I would like to welcome my fellow junior minister and commissioner of tourism to this very important meeting. So welcome to you all. All right, relax. So the first topic that will be discussed is virtual reality and tourism, enticing a new generation of explorers. According to Uprox, in 2017, the tourism industry was reporting a 190% increase in bookings since the adaptation of virtual reality in their approach to business, and VR is anticipated to become bigger and more integrated into travel and tourism as the technology advances. From the creation of 360 degree destination videos to incise persons to visit an attraction or destination, to virtual tours of hotels and even aircrafts to the travel concierge, your virtual travel agent, which scans numerous databases to come up with the perfect individualized travel package to attractions that combine physical and virtual dimensions, VR can enrich the visitor experience by blending both a real world mixed with virtual reality. So, as junior minister or commissioner of tourism, share one idea that the Tourism Product Development Department of your country can implement using virtual reality to encourage persons to visit your destination or to enhance an existing product that will surely make the visitor experience even more memorable and enjoyable. At this moment, I now wish to invite the Junior Minister of Tourism from Antigua and Barbuda. Aprox, a popular news culture website, stated that virtual reality increased bookings by 190%. Therefore, under Minister Singh's leadership, AKA Minister Curry, my department will use virtual reality to enrich our prevailing products. Collins Dictionary defines virtual reality as a computer-generated environment that closely resembles reality. Mr. Colin Skerritt, our tourism director in our Canadian office, commenced utilizing virtual reality in generating a true-to-life experience. Further, Mr. Adam Lyman from Winged Whale Media recounts an emotional moment of a disabled tour operator unable to travel experiencing Antigua and Barbuda through virtual reality. Mr. Chia, this is by no means a plateau of what VR technology offers. We will further augment this approach by fashioning a virtual reality world on wheels, cited in each of our fundamental tourism markets. Don't worry, it will be on time. Access our enthralling virtual clips through Facebook, YouTube, and Google Chrome. Ladies and gentlemen, allow Minister Curry to showcase the true epitome of creativity and technology. Without further ado, welcome to Virtual Island Paradise. Step foot onto this Garden of Eden and indulge in a mouth-watering glass of antique and rum punch. Intake the nautical atmosphere of tropical scent and sound to entice your brief journey. Now, sit back, put on the cardboard, and witness Virtual Island Paradise. Open your eyes to a warm smile from staff that cater to your every need while still escorting you to your state-of-the-art decor room. Rejuvenate on the balcony, witnessing the pictures view of mesmeric Long Bay. Spectate history written in cobblestone walkways and elegant stone buildings in Nelson's dockyard. Listen to the stingrays resonating. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. After, I want you to come and join me on an expedition as you rise up to Shelley's height, pelting waistline to the sweet pulsating rhythm of the steel pan. Wasn't that legit? Virtual Island Paradise, health and wellness with good vibes and joy. Relax and you'll be mesmerized. Antigua and Barbuda. Come live the life. 
Thank you very much, Antigan Barbuda. So, continuing question number one, we will have Barbados, the Junior Minister of Tourism for Barbados. The technological development of the wider international society has forced us to innovate. Every hotel worth its rating has access to high quality Wi Fi. Every savvy business owner operates a social media page that can reach a global audience. However, we must not rest on our laurels. We must seize new high-tech ideas and solutions as they develop. We must become visionaries as opposed to just playing it safe. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where VR comes in, virtual reality. VR technologies such as the Oculus Rift and Microsoft HoloLens are the latest innovation in technology, used in everything from video games to flight testing. And I believe it can be used to the benefit of our tourism industry. Just imagine the Barbados kiosk at the World Travel Market 2018. A potential visitor comes into the kiosk and dons the Oculus Rift. Through this portal, she would dive into the clear waters of Carlisle Bay. Imagine her swimming through the remains of shipwrecks while parrotfish and angelfish personally escort her through her adventure. Flash above water to the rhythms of soca music and the hype of grand cadument. She chips along with the bands in a field of color and movement, swaying with the music and ingesting local culture. She takes off her VR headset and she is back at the world travel market. But now, wouldn't she want to go to that beautiful place? Wouldn't you want to go there? VR technology would give Barbados's tourism product the opportunity to appeal to Generation Z. As members of this nuanced group, we love our technology and desire for it to be integrated into everything we do. Additionally, we geeks do travel, but when we travel, it isn't just for sun, sea, and sand, oh no. We travel for unique experiences that match our interests. Interests such as gaming, which is why I laud the efforts of the organizers of AnimeCon in my country for appealing to my geek demographic. But I believe we could go further. As Junior Minister of Tourism, I would also appeal to my geek demographic by establishing strategic partnerships with the companies which develop the games we play. Think of the employment opportunities to manufacture, maintain, and sell these technologies. The Barbados brand could partner with companies like Ubisoft, developers of Assassin's Creed, to have a virtual reality expansion set in Barbados. We could develop our own virtual reality adventure game based on Bayesian folklore. A player could hunt the monsters of our mythology, the steel donkey, the heart man, and be the hero of his own Barbadian story. Fellow colleagues, VR technology is a world sweeping phenomenon and we must take advantage of it. This partnership will elevate our industry. This partnership will develop our creative economy. This partnership is tourism in the 21st century, a strategic partnership for geeks like me, Mr. Chairman. Moving on, we will next have the Junior Minister of Tourism from the British Virgin Islands. As we continue to rebuild post-hurricane on Maria, let us take these beautiful images and share them with the world. We are still beautiful. According to Condé Nast Traveler magazine, the largest travel trends are being ushered in by millennials. Virtual reality is not new to millennials. They already use it for gaming and watching movies on their smartphones. So let me tell you how it would work. Adventurers will enjoy all thrill-seeker videos. Renting a scooter is the best way to see Anigata. Enjoy miles of the road with minimum traffic. Explore Anigata, flanked by amazing beaches and a population of only 333 residents. By creating virtual reality videos, we will capture this new group of travelers to the British Virgin Islands. H2O videos for all water lovers. They can explore all islands, reach out, and touch nature. Potential guests can receive our e-newsletter anywhere in the world, watch and win. It's that simple. Or explore the British Virgin Islands with true virtual reality headsets that will be placed at all trade and consumer shows. Enjoy. Local entertainment while sailing around the destination by yacht or by powerboat, moving from island to island with ease. Stop at a flamingo pond and see the flamingos in their natural habitat from a safe distance through a telescope. 98% of smartphone users are between the ages of 25 and 34, according to Nelson.com. Their phone is basically like a pastor's Bible. They don't leave home without it. Virtual reality will be the catalyst for the British Virgin Islands to entice this new group of travelers to experience the destinations far beyond just sun, sand, and sea. Thank you.
Thank you, British Virgin Islands. Okay, to continue, I now invite the Junior Minister of St. Martin. A devastating hurricane made landfalls on the shores of my island, St. Martin. Just as the mighty winds that hit, we shook, we trembled, we bent, we swerved, but we never wavered. As we band together and rebuild my island, I have wondered about the ways we can share with the world to promote our product. Then I realized that the only way is by being innovative in sharing the good news story remotely. That's right, for travel consumers through virtual reality, which can be used to enhance their traveling experience. I welcome you to my enchanting island, St. Martin. Come and fly with me and take a glimpse as Mr. Emilio Wilson himself, one of our most known historical icons, take you on a stimulated and visually pleasing tour through Emilio Wilson's interactive museum before booking. Located in the left corner of the screen, the Fly With Me app that I have created deliberately to enter the virtual space was developed for users to experience the activity from any part of the world where you can enjoy the breathtaking sights and the beaches that many yearn to experience. Toward the statues of our cultural icons, like the salt pickers roundabout, reminiscent of our forefathers who toiled day and night in the salt ponds. Also, mind-blowing and interactive holograms of the Juan Tete Loki, the iconic female slave. Come, take a ride on the Flying Dutchman, our 2018 Sea Trade Crude Award zipline, one of the steepest in the world, which sits perched atop of the Century Hill and boasts 360 views of some of St. Martin's finest sights. Then feel the burst of energy against your face as you descend lightning speed to reach the end of the adventure. Just envision walking through the doors of the musical exhibition hall where you are met by the mighty Dow one of our many musical ambassadors who will give you a virtual steel pan demonstration. Visualize sitting on a Malabay beach with the pristine aquamarine waters lapping at your feet, laying in the sand, sipping a guava berry drink as the 747 Bluebird makes its final call to the Princess Juliana International Airport for landing. Honorable Minister Richards, the Bahamas is beautiful, but now wouldn't you agree? that after a tour like this, you aren't ready to pack your bags and board a flight directly to my little unique island, the only island in the world governed by two nations, and live in harmony as one, St. Martin, St. Martin, where we soar above the rest. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much, St. Martin. And finally, the last country in question one, Tobago. Good morning. The global virtual reality market is projected to grow by a significant 57% over the next decade to reach an unbelievable 45 billion US dollars by 2027. Digital travel sales are expected to reach 198 billion this year with VR ups and tours capturing an enormous share of the market revenue. Virtual reality is a game changer with the potential to revolutionize any tourism industry. Ladies and gentlemen, I am now delighted to share my virtual reality proposal called VR Tobago and how it can be used to enhance the value proposition of Tobago's tourism product. VR Tobago is an app which encourages potential tourists to familiarize themselves in local activities, cultural knowledge, tourism niches, and to book local packages from anywhere in the world. The idea is to evoke the sensations of sharing in Tobago's unique experiences. From our goat and crab races, to participating in tutorials of traditional dances, such as our brushback or jig. What about having a sneak peek into our illustrious history, or even learning the local dialect? So that you will know, having a little lime, is not literally having a little lime. As a prelude to your dream vacation, VR Tobago will give you not only the sight, but the sounds of native birds and trickling waters as you visit the oldest protected rainforest in the Western Hemisphere, located right in my paradise, Tobago. Or you can enjoy the soothing experience of being submerged in our mysterious nylon pool nestled in the middle of the Caribbean Sea. 
VR Tobago will also allow the physically challenged traveler to experience atop our magnificent triple-leveled Argyle waterfall without endangering themselves in the climb. By means of virtual reality boots positioned on location, they will enjoy the astounding sights, sounds, and vibrational feel of actually climbing this picturesque waterfall. My friends, times are changing. We must all now cater to the experiential traveler by providing authentic experiences unique to our island, which offers unforgettable memories. The technocrats from my ministry have done the projections, and we expect that VR Tobago can result in a 100% increase in bookings, arrivals, and foreign exchange for the destination. Technology is truly the new reality. Now tell me, colleagues, why shouldn't we take advantage of this tremendous opportunity? Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Thank you, Tobago. Now that concludes the discussion for topic number one. Moving on to topic number two, developing smart and sustainable Caribbean countries, building back better. The question is, the devastating hurricane season the region experienced in 2017 with nine of our islands taking a severe battering and with its people's lives and livelihoods being destroyed overnight has caused our Caribbean planners and developers in partnership with international organizations and aid agencies to take shock and to take stock sorry and determine how we can build more resilient countries that can better withstand future intense shocks which may become the new normal. So, as Junior Minister or Commissioner of Tourism, share your perspective on how the tourism sector in the Caribbean can play its part in helping our region to build back better, to create more resilient countries and sustainable lifestyles and livelihoods for our people. The Minister from the Hamas. Fellow Junior Ministers and Commissioners of Tourism, Imagine, house gone, car gone, everything gone. Now add to this, the loss of confidence and demoralization. Imagine the fear felt by the affected, the fear of the future, and the daunting nature of rebuilding. This became a reality for several Bahamian families after the triple threat of hurricanes Joaquin, Irma, and Maria. Colleagues, Natural disasters may be predictable, but they are unavoidable and therefore require a strategic plan to help us with coping with the aftermath. Building back better requires action that will reap long-term resilience. We must consider sustainability. I interpret this complex word to mean balance, balance between preservation and development. For us to sustain what we have, I humbly propose we consider three key areas. First, natural disaster risk planning. Just last year, we conducted the largest evacuation in our nation's history from our southern islands due to Hurricane Irma. This large-scale evacuation was only possible because of a carefully considered plan of action. Knowing ahead of time how various scenarios must be handled will definitely minimize our destruction. Secondly, protection of our environment is vital. With over two million areas of protected land and sea, the Bahamas provides a sustainable sanctuary. Mangroves found across the Caribbean provide a sheltered habitat to juvenile fish and major protection to our shorelines. However, Dredging and rising sea levels pose a threat to our mangrove population and other ecosystems which are vital to the success of our tourism industries. We must form movements to protect these vital resources just as they protect us in our time of need. Lastly, we must have resilient infrastructure. Why not tap into the most abundant resource available to us, solar energy? Downed power lines after major hurricanes can take several months to be repaired. Solar energy will get us back in business more quickly and reduce our repair times. Junior ministers and commissioners, while disasters are a common feature of our past, present, and future, 
for long-term resilience, we must come together and act now to avoid further human suffering, environmental degradation, and developmental setbacks. For us, building back better will ensure that others recognize that it truly is better in the Bahamas. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Bahamas, for your presentation. And to continue, Mr. Grenada, are you ready? The floor is yours. We are small island states, but we have demonstrated time and again that we have what it takes to be resilient in Grenada. These threats affect us all as a region, as seen by the flooding, flooding in Barbados and the recent earthquake that struck Trinidad. But let us take a look at what our policymakers are doing to build back better. As video will not play, I will explain. Mr. Timothy Antoine explained that they are exploring a growth and resilience fund to help the Caribbean to explore it, what it calls its attempt to become the first climate resilient nation in the world. And as we can see, our policymakers are taking this very seriously, and so should we. First, I would like to throw the term building back better out of the window in favor of a new term, one that will not take us back to where we were before, but help us to leap into the future. But let us take a, look, uh, take a look at some key terms. Being united, being climate smart, maintaining a vibrant economy, having mesmerizing brands, and of course, focusing on our people. With this in mind, I have found it best to use the term transformative resilience. This term takes into account all we need to be as a region, constantly transforming to keep afloat like a rubber duck in a bathtub. I have thought long and hard of how best tourism can contribute to this futuristic, sustainable thrust for the region. Therefore, I propose the Tourism Transformative Reserve. The building blocks of the TTR and priority areas include climate smart tourism, sustainable lifestyles, and knowledge and education. This fund will take a three-pronged approach. Firstly, the funding of revolutionary research and implementation of climate smart tourism to create sustainable lifestyles to benefit those who depend on the sector. Secondly, the funding of, the funding of tourism education programs to get the youth thinking of what they can do to make their contribution, but at the next level. We want transformative thinking. Thirdly, the funding of programs to encourage citizens to live their lives in a way that will not negatively impact their environment. Pure Grenada has already started with our recent ban on polystyrene. But making this fund successful depends on all of we. And today, I pledge my $5 to the TTR, and I call on all of, you to, all of you stakeholders to do the same by downloading the mobile app. I have made it easy, so you have no excuses. I thank you. We shall go right on to the next country's presentation, which is St. Kitts. Imagine relocating the entire population of your country in the face of a colossal hurricane, and two months later, still not being able to get back home. Now imagine spending several nights in a shelter and taking a show the next morning, only to find what you used to call country reduced to an apocalyptic scene, Erwin LaRock and Akim Steiner, 2017. Fellow junior ministers, we are aware that the Caribbean is prone to disasters, and with tourism as our main industry, it behoves us to build back better in order to create more resilient countries and sustainable lifestyles and livelihoods for our people. According to the UN World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction, the term build back better can be defined as the restoration of communities and assets in a manner that makes them less vulnerable to disasters and strengthens their resilience. Mr. Moderator, the 2015 Paris Agreement outlines policies that admonish countries to strengthen their global response to the threat of climate change by keeping a global temperature rise well below 2 degrees Celsius. Hence, a resilient country should have a strong infrastructure. The electric power system should be transformed. We should not only install underground power lines in select areas prone to high wind damage, but also establish a system that will deliver increased renewable energy resources, such as wind and solar, reduce the dependency on fossil fuels, and enable energy to become abundant, affordable, and sustainable to improve the way of life in the Caribbean. Additionally, we have roads that repel water and cause flooding. 
To counter this problem, we should invest in streets that drink water and mitigate flood damage. Colleagues, if we are to build back better, we must revisit the construction of houses, design round buildings instead of long rectangular buildings. According to Malawi's guidance on building resilient homes, round buildings are stronger against violent winds. Also, we must consider the newly invented Sargassum Seaweed House named La Angelita by Sanchez Vasquez. Vasquez transformed the feared seaweed into an organic, thermal, and functional construction material. Its hardness is resistant to hurricanes, and Vasquez assured that there is no unpleasant odor after the brick-making process is completed. Finally, we must implement disaster funds. This ensures the availability and affordability of funds in a crisis. We must also ensure that there is a rapid release of these funds in the wake of a disaster. Consequently, the government, private sector, and civil society play a pivotal role in ensuring that recovery efforts are effectively planned, managed, and implemented. Thank you. St. Martin. My name is Jonathan Hodge, and I'm highly privileged to represent my island, St. Martin, by debating with my Caribbean neighbors. May this experience be enriching to all. After the major destruction caused by above historical records Hurricane Irma, I am more than concerned by the second topic. The Caribbean, one of the most beautiful regions on Earth characterized by its environment, history, culture, people, and by a common source of economy, tourism is our home. It is subject to natural disasters, nothing new. Earthquakes, eruptions, floods, hurricanes, dry seasons, and hopefully not tsunamis. No matter how exposed we are, the Caribbean remains our home. If there should be a reminder given by Mother Nature last September, is that we are resilient, born resilient from resilient ancestors. Resilience is in our genes. We are resilient, each one of us separately. And if there should be a lesson taught by Mother Nature, it's about time we adapt to a climate resilient unity. Rebuilding consciously must be programmed on each one of our government's agenda. It means thinking on constructions and shelters with new architecture, structures, materials, locations, and production. Indeed, production. All ingredients to build or rebuild, including recycled products, but also water produced by us for us. What about safe electricity and communications with underground installations? Rebuilding consciously also means thinking on being able to react in no time by addressing aids, supplies, assistance by air or sea. I've observed rescue coming in particular from European countries situated far away from us. How could they have reacted so rapidly? I assume they are prepared and trained to do so. I deduce that we, Caribbean territories, are so close, but yet so far. I keep faith that the day will come when Caribbean people will be rescued by their own. No more limited resilience. However, rebuilding should take on a particular character. Tourism is the main source of income of our island nations. It maintains the flow of business locally, regionally, internationally. One of the major consequences of natural disasters is the high percentage of tourist cancellations on our badly hit islands. According to the CTO, after these recent hurricanes, we, the Caribbean, have lost more than $1 billion in tourism revenue. $1 billion. I suggest that we create the ECTP, Emergency Caribbean Tourism Partnership, a network that will deal with the international aid agencies. When booking, in case of natural disasters, epidemiological alerts, social disturbances, or terrorist attacks, we are in position to direct the tourists to another destination in the region. It appears like a third cooperation demonstrating how sustainable tourism can be considered on a larger scale. Caribbean, let us hold hands and put our heads together. Let us portray our resilience to the most extreme. Caribbean, united. I thank you for listening. Right, so now for the final question, question number three. This topic deals with year of wellness and rejuvenation, enhancing the Caribbean's tourism product offering. The notion of being rejuvenated in the Caribbean is one more reason to let us pamper you in 2018, said the Secretary General of the Caribbean Tourism Organization on declaring 2018 the Year of Wellness and Rejuvenation in the Caribbean. According to the Global Wellness Institute, a Florida-based nonprofit organization that provides global research and insight 
into the wellness industry, the global wellness economy in 2015 was valued at $3.72 trillion and comprises some of the following sectors. Spa and spa, wellness tourism, sulfur springs, healthy eating, nutrition and weight loss clinics, and beauty and anti-aging. The Caribbean is, therefore, positioned as an ideal wellness destination. As junior minister or commissioner of tourism, select one sector listed above and share how your ministry plan to tap into this area with a view to designing and creating a new wellness and rejuvenation tourism product or service offering which has a Caribbean flair, feel, or touch. So now, I will now call on the junior minister from Cayman Islands to begin the discussion on the third topic. When the word Caribbean is spoken, it's interpreted in two different ways. Now as locals, we tend to think along the lines of home, family, and life. But when a tourist hears the word, they think along the lines of rejuvenation, relaxation, and peace. And these are all elements that fall under the wellness umbrella, so to speak. Now, wellness in itself is not just being free from illness. It is a completely balanced state of mental and physical health, as well as social well-being. And it is working towards achieving a healthy, but also fulfilling lifestyle. And wellness tourism, described from the perspective of a tourist, is described as putting your health and relaxation at the center of your travel experience. But in order to answer the question that's been posed to me, keeping in mind the rising trend of wellness tourism, I present to you Live Cayman, a wellness center that targets a tourist seeking relaxation by providing services that overall enhance the Cayman experience. And these services may be anything from various spa treatments to newer treatments such as sound therapy and guided meditation. To envision the epitome of island excellence an off-the-map paradise surrounded by blue water with no end. The Caribbean's best kept secret, Little Cayman, the smallest of our sister islands and the location in which Live Cayman will be built. The reason being that it allows us to infuse our wellness center with the most authentic Caribbean feel. And now you may be wondering what the difference between Live Cayman and any other wellness center is. And that is, instead of focusing on a facility that appears modern, Live Cayman will work alongside the natural environment in Little Cayman, and you'll see what I mean by that in the following slide, by staying eco-conscious. So in order to achieve this, and in order to preserve the natural environment in Little Cayman, during the construction phase, we will implement environmentally friendly alternatives, which include the use of solar panels and green roofs, the use of recycled materials from our landfills in Cayman Brac and Grand Cayman, and as well as the use of 3D printing technology, which allows us to cut back on the amount of materials we use. And these efforts combined will help us preserve the natural Caribbean feel of our wellness center and the environment in Little Cayman. But the vision behind Live Cayman is to bring more recognition to Little Cayman as a tourist destination, to create a Caribbean haven, and to overall set the standard for wellness in the Caribbean. So the next time you think wellness, Think Live Cayman and think Little Cayman. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Cayman Islands. All right, to continue, I will, the next country is Dominica. Are you ready? I had to ask myself, when people think of Dominica as a tourist destination, what comes to their mind? Dominica is often promoted as an adventure tourist destination, but all of this is just a little too much for some people. A significant portion of the market just wants to relax, rejuvenate mentally and emotionally, and become healthier physically. Is my tourism product perhaps intimidating to this portion of the market? CTO has declared 2018 as the year of wellness and rejuvenation in the Caribbean. Wellness tourism was a market worth $3.73 trillion in 2015. Colleagues, this is a market worth tapping into. As Junior Minister of Tourism for Dominica and the youngest member of the Dominica Health and Wellness Association, it is my pleasure to introduce to you a unique proposal that will do just that, the Kalinago Wellness Resort. This beautiful nature-themed resort 
will be located in the heart of the Kalinago territory and will be modeled after a traditional Kalinago village. My Kalinago ancestors were one with nature. This is why I believe using Kalinago principles will make a successful wellness resort. Imagine breathing fresh, clean air from the balcony of your villa, constructed in traditional Kalinago style, thatch roof and hammock included, but with a few modern amenities. Of course, have breakfast at one of our signature restaurants, delight your body and nourish your soul with tasty Kalinago cuisine. Take a meditative canoe ride down the most peaceful river. Bank your canoe to picnic at the edge of the awe-inspiring Isulukati Falls. Get your blood pumping with authentic Kalinago dance lessons. Or relax with aromatherapy using secret healing Kalinago herbs, imparting serenity, peace, and tranquility. This will be the legacy of the Kalinago Wellness Resort, a legacy that will draw visitors to the island, improving stay over tourism in Dominica. This is the year of new directions. From now on, think of Dominica as the number one place on earth to rejuvenate, recreate, and reconnect. Moving right on, Ms. Jamaica, it's now your turn. Wellness tourism is travel linked to the pursuit of enhancing or maintaining one's personal well-being. This represents the intersection of a powerful lifestyle and a growing global industry. At a market value of $439 billion in 2013, wellness tourism is growing rapidly as more tourists are turning to health and wellness retreats as a way to find balance in their busy lifestyles. Dr. Henry Lowe, Jamaican cannabis researcher, defined the sector as, and I quote, where we are special and poised for greater growth and development, end quote. Yes, greater growth and development. Tourism began in the Caribbean in 1778 in Nevis with flora and fauna, and 1891 in Jamaica with the big exhibition. No, having moved from flora and fauna in 1778, to sun, sand, and sea in 2018, how can we diversify our tourism product to accommodate this new wellness economy in 2018, the digital era? Well, I propose an app, sun, sand, and be healthy. The Mamordi Cacharantia, commonly known as Circe, is found throughout the Caribbean where its leaves are decocted and infused for a panacea. The Bryophyllum pinnatum leaf of life is used to soothe ulcers of the gastrointestinal tract. Aloe vera, no, nipapaya, leaf quacker, and we could go on. In August, the Bayesian government indicated that they do plan to tap into cannabis. What we want to do is to tap into herbaceuticals, which is the use of plant-based material to tackle and treat illnesses. The truth is, the Caribbean has a natural remedy for almost all ills and they're literally in our backyards, and everyone wants to live like a local. The linkages network in the, in the Ministry of Tourism in Jamaica has used GIS mapping to show over 1,200 wellness assets. Using this data, we're combining with herbalists, where the people just input their symptoms, and we give them the natural remedy, and we're in not only Jamaica, but the Caribbean to locate it. Now that is an inclusive tourism product working for you. Rejuvenation, back on track. Recreation, new culture. Reconnection, balance in the Caribbean. Sun, sand, and be healthy. I yes so nice. Thank you. All right. To continue our discussion on topic number three, the Commissioner of Tourism from Martinique shall now present. We work hard, very hard, even too hard, until we might even collapse. In this world of high stress levels, social media overload, have you ever felt like you need to take a break and breathe? Well, don't worry. The Junior Commission of Martinique, AKA Dr. Caroline, has the perfect treatment for you. An original sensory journey in the never 
felt better center. Martinique, the island of flowers and luxuriant nature, presents you with the structure that will change your life by providing food for your body, your mind, and your soul. First, you have to sign up online or on site and choose between two cards. Get a regular experience with the standard card that gives access to a wide range of activities. Or choose the mystery card and we will customize a program based on your needs, your tastes, and your personality. The Never Fed Better program includes nature discovery. So, there's a Creo garden where you can connect with nature and pick local medicinal plants we call Rimedrasier, such as Atumu, Ibiscus, and there's also a tea bar right next to the garden where you will enjoy the making and the tasting of the authentic tea that best suits you. Our restaurant will provide organic and locally grown products with their nutrient intake specified, so you will be able to choose what you like and have a delectable learning experience without freaking out about calories. Belle meditation, an innovating concept in the Never Fed Better Center featuring culture and nature. Belle meditation, an opportunity to discover your inner self lulled by the unique sound of belly drums at the drums' feet. Do you feel the vibe? <sighs> what a magical way to end the day. Colleagues, the Never Fed Better Center is a tourism product that offers a new vision of wellness through a unique and unforgettable experience in the island. So, come and succumb to the charm of Martinique because Martinique loves you. Martinique aime. La Martinique, elle vous aime. Thank you. All right, moving on. The Junior Minister of Navies shall now present. The tourism industry has been undergoing intensive processes of diversification, resulting in a demand for niche products such as wellness tourism, states the International states Journal, the Journal of Management Journal and, of and, Social, Sciences and Social Sciences Research. Colleagues, the growth of wellness growth tourism of wellness is phenomenal. Tourism is phenomenal. According to the Global Wellness According Institute, the global, the global wellness industry, wellness industry grew wellness by 10.6% from 2013 to 2015, 2015 amassing a mega $3.72 trillion. As Junior Minister of Tourism for Nevis, I intend to mobilize resources to develop our wellness tourism product. I have a vision to transform the last operating sugar estate into a premier wellness retreat. Journey with me to the sweet reprieve of the New River Wellness Retreat, where we will massage your mind, seduce your soul, and caress the contours of your imagination. The New River Wellness Retreat will invite visitors to interact with its striking landscape that offers panoramic views of Nevis Peak and the Atlantic Ocean. When you enter the reception area, you'll be taken on a historic tour of the property's revitalized ruins, where you can partake in juicing local produce at the Fresh Juice Center, or just sit and enjoy a glass of freshly juiced sugarcane, which is reputed to fight many illnesses, including kidney diseases. The guest rooms are strategically dispersed for maximum privacy and meditation. The simplicity of the rooms is to encourage our guests to rest and enjoy the peaceful, magical surroundings. No television and no Wi-Fi at night either. Visitors will wake up refreshed and ready for the early morning wellness walk that will take you on a trek through a lane of reforested coconut trees and ends with exhilarating deep breathing. Patrons can also book sessions at the yoga pavilion overlooking the ocean. After this soothing session, guests will be treated to a refreshing glass of revitalizing coconut water. Authentic organic cuisine made with produce from the estate's tropical garden will also be served along with local healing herbal teas. There is also a donkey sanctuary. Animal therapy has proven effective in quelling anxiety and stress. Visitors to the estate will be encouraged to nurture these creatures. Our last stop, the sugar cane spa. Here guests will receive treatment with sugar cane scented steam towels and a moisturizing body massage utilizing lotion 
made from the sugarcane extract. Colleagues, let us position ourselves to capture a fair share of the robust wellness tourism market. Wellness tourism benefits the mind, the soul, the body, and the economy. All right, to continue our discussion, I wish I'll now invite the Junior Minister of Tourism from St. Lucia to present now. 2018 is the year of worldwide culture protection and Caribbean wellness and rejuvenation. The growing $563.2 billion wellness tourism industry can pave new direction for Caribbean tourism and can provide tourists increasingly demanded authenticity and locals direct benefits from tourism. And so I present Renew, Create Your Caribbean. Welcome to the holistic wellness experience which uses St. Lucia's rich arts and heritage as a creative release to renew tourists. Just the notion of rejuvenating hair is enough to clear the mind, but now more than ever, tourists seek new and authentic experiences. Placing accommodations in the hands of the community can provide that bona fide wellness paradise. From $50 to $5 million accommodations, Airbnbs with healthy lifestyle amenities rented out by residents would infuse a real sense of traditional island life and improve the local economy. At the Wellness Center, visitors would be pampered with traditional remedies Lucians swear by and be massaged from hair to toe with coconut oil, cocoa fat, aloe, and even more, and plus experience the on-site skincare routine of the Sulphur Spring Mud. Sway your worries away to the music of Boo Hinkson and Jab Duplessis as you are nourished by the creative cuisine cooked by our talented local chefs, personalized and enhanced to restore your health in complete serenity. The vibrancy the Caribbean is known for is perfect for creatively expressing oneself. Running your fingers along the wet clay and painting the picturesque Lucian landscape are ideal for art therapy proven to restore mental and emotional wellness. Get hands on at the farm and feel at one with nature as you connect with the environment, as you boost immunity in the open air, completely clearing the mind and totally rejuvenating. Reconnect as you physically de knot and de-stress in a one-of-a-kind workout. Goat yoga, that's right. And let's not forget, that's revenue. Inspire your adrenaline rush with dance programs using St. Lucia's 15 plus reinvigorating cultural dances. From slow quadrille to upbeat jouet party and the modern song and dance crazes, you are guaranteed to be physically renewed. Now this is not just a vacation in the Caribbean, but in the Caribbean. Let St. Lucia inspire your wellness experience. Renew, create your Caribbean. Thank you. All right, thank you, Miss St. Lucia. Moving right on, the Junior Minister of Tourism from St. Eustatius. Come with me. Let me take you on a discovering journey while we explore a hidden treasure, one of the Caribbean's best kept secrets. Many islands and countries around the world promote wellness and spa in big luxurious hotels. I would like to introduce to you the absolute opposite. It is a touch of nature, history, and tranquility. St. Eustatius Wellness Spa, the morning glory, is situated on an island that is serene, peaceful, and untouched. Our mission is geared towards those in need of relaxation, detoxification, and reducing stress. Unpaved walking and hiking trails and open air spas are just a few of our carefree and undemanding amenities. St. Eustatius Wellness Spa is named after one of the rarest flowers known to grow in the entire Dutch Kingdom. The architectural design of Stacia's Wellness Spa complements a glimpse of our 17th and 18th century wooden colonial houses that will take you a step back in time. Our location will be set at the foot of our majestic extinct volcano, the Quail, nestled in a lush tropical surrounding, which is a natural healing 
to the stressed and worked out souls. Stacia's Wellness Spa would offer holistic treatments. These include black therapeutic sand and natural herbs. Facts proven from my still alive and in sound mind, 99 year old great grandma. On Stacia, we offer all natural herbs prime, such as the alo aloe vera drinks, lemongrass, and the moringa, just to name a few. They offer calmness, beautification, and are health oriented with no artificial substance. Besides their beautiful aroma, these natural herbs offer the best health benefits for curing a simple cold, arthritis, and for the ladies, a flawless skin. The black therapeutic sand, which embraces our island's beaches, gives you a touch of the healing process. Our black sand baths or body scrubs will give you a heaven-like feeling. Hiking to heaven is a fitness and restorative hike. You will be riding to a height of 2,000 feet, reaching the highest peak on station. Come with me. Let me take you to my beautiful island, the Caribbean's hidden gem. I thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And now our penultimate speaker, which is the Junior Minister of Tourism from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, shall now speak on this topic. To agree with singer Belinda Carlisle, that heaven is a place on earth. Experience life on the private island resorts of Young Island, Palm Island, and PT St. Vincent, which is a few cottages, white sand beaches lined with coconut trees, hammocks in the breeze, calm turquoise seas, visits to the spa at leisure, the frolic of the breeze in the trees, swimming with our friendly critters. In St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Mother Nature is waiting for you. She is waiting to bathe you in hot springs and massage you under waterfalls. She is waiting to fill your lungs with rainforest breath and nourish you with the fruits of her volcanic soil. She is waiting to rock you to sleep with the sounds of her seascape to be renewed in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. Thank you, Mr. St. Vincent. And now to conclude the first round, we will have the Junior Minister of Tourism from Turks and Caicos to make a presentation. Imagine relaxing on the largest island in the Turks and Caicos archipelago. Middle Caicos, with a population of less than 100 inhabitants. And North Caicos, conveniently connected via bridge. An island rich in vegetation and untouched natural beauty. I propose that my government use facilities that already exist on these secluded islands to design and implement a wellness and rejuvenation village on the resort of Dragon Key which would cater to the whole man, body, mind, and soul. Wake up in the morning to the smell of freshly brewed moringa and mint teas with a myriad of organic fruits, papayas, mangoes, sausaps, or have a cup of our freshly squeezed orange juice, all grown locally on the island of North Caicos. Two key components of wellness tourism are activity and nature. So begin your day with a workout in the gym or a walk, ride, or run through our nature trails. Enjoy fresh, unpolluted air and end on one of our secluded beaches, Mersion Harbor. Restored mental health and most importantly, acted as a stress reliever. Wellness tourism thrives in areas that are tucked away in nature, but still provides meaningful human interactions. And that's why our twin islands are the perfect place. A visit to our local bush doctor is a must to get a free lecture on the importance of locally made bush medicines, which are readily available at his home in Middle Caicos. You can choose to end your day in our silent spas, which according to the Global Wellness Institute is the third trend in the wellness sector for 2017 and beyond. Filled with indigenous products such as sea salt, seaweed, and oils. Sea salt is a natural healing agent and is used in the famous salt glow in our spas to exfoliate the skin. Our seaweed would be used in wraps for facials, toning, moisturizing, hydrating, and revitalizing cells. One may ask, who are we catering for? 
the wellness travelers who travel primarily for wellness, those empty nesters, the well-educated affiliated professionals who want to spend some me time to enhance their personal health and well-being. The country benefits economically as tourism arrivals increase. And according to the Global Wellness Summit, this growing market is expected to hit $680 billion by 2020. And the TCI will indeed be poised to get our share from investing in our wellness and rejuvenation center. Thank you. Thank you, fellow junior ministers and commissioner of tourism for your views on these topics. These were some very interesting presentations right there. So now it's time for the second round, the moment we've all been waiting for. So we shall now proceed with the mystery question aspect of the meeting. Prior to the start of the meeting, you have had a very brief opportunity to look at the three mystery questions and you have selected an envelope containing one of these three mystery topics to which you'll respond. So, the three mystery topics under consideration are, number one, the Caribbean Tourism Organization declared 2018 as the Caribbean Year of Wellness and Rejuvenation. Share with us three activities or events that, are, that your destination could offer to visitors as part of this theme. Number two in English, I don't read French, sorry. Package three special elements of your country's cultural heritage, for example, music, dance, festivals, craft, artifacts, etc., and offer it as a new and exciting experience for visitors to your destination. And number three, share three tips on how visitors can contribute towards responsible tourism in your destination. Colleagues, when you are asked to open your envelope, and only when you are asked to, you will be given half a minute, 30 seconds, to review your mystery question and only one minute to answer. Your time will be guided by the bell. So as soon as you open your envelope and you pull out the paper, your 30 seconds will start, all right? Since you had the brief opportunity to look after, you should have a brief idea of what you should say. So you have 30 seconds to review your question and only one minute to respond. Your time, all right, will be guided by the timekeeper. Although it is very important, I must say that you must, before you start, you must state the question that you are answering. Do not read the question. We shall go in alphabetical order. So, Antigua and Barbuda, may you open your envelope, please. I will be speaking on question three. In Antigua and Barbuda, our visitors are our main priority. However, visitors must engage in responsible tourism. Firstly, they must dispose of their garbage into the receptacles, which will then preserve the luscious landscape of my 108 square miles. Secondly, they have to bring awareness to other persons about what Antigua and Barbuda has to offer beyond our 365 crystalline clear blue waters. And lastly, the visitors must help out the local crafters in the destination so that we are able to better sell the, our destination. Therefore, with that being said, fellow colleagues, move aside because Antigua and Barbuda has arrived. All right, so next, the Junior Minister of Bahamas. Can you please open your envelope? It's okay. I will be speaking on question number three. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Upon your arrival yesterday, several of my colleagues asked me about 
um, are we gonna go see the swimming pigs? But I would like to take this moment to say that even while you're visiting, even while our visitors are here, we care about them and we care about what they do to us. And just like my other colleagues said, I, they need to take it upon themselves to reuse, recycle, reduce their plastic waste because it is going back into our ecosystems. I would also like to encourage our visitors to shop locally to reduce the amount of goods that have to be brought into the, com into the country. I would also, I would also say that they should protect our vital resources. Thank you. Minister, Junior Minister of Barbados, may you please open your envelope? I would propose combining this with our sugar festival. We have every year a sugar festival celebrating the bits of our culture that involve sugar and rum. We are the home of rum, and the oldest, uh, we have the oldest rum recipe in the world. And then, then I would combine it all into our sweetness of crop over to have one big sweet sugar festival for our visitors. Thank you. Junior Minister of the Britain, Virgin, British Virgin Islands. Question number one. Visitors come to the British Virgin Islands, many on a daily, mostly for the adventure, the festive life. But, here is how we can use wellness and rejuvenation. The British Virgin Islands can offer one. Upon arrival, there will be chaos filled with the special fish that nibble at the bottom of your feet to eat off the dead skin, that takes off the dead skin off of your feet. That's one we can offer in a package. Two, many Older people know about the great oils, the greatness of all the oils within our destination. They can use that and sell that to guests as well to give them this relaxed feeling even though they cannot go to a, their, a massages. And thirdly, we can offer on special days that we offer free beach massage, massages on the beach. So fellow guests, even though they're at the beach swimming, they can also relax after a nice Hand and they can relax and enjoy the sea breeze while hands are being massaged into their body, relaxing them for their day. Thank you. Thank you, British Virgin Islands. To move on even quicker, while the judges will be writing on their notes, that 13, 30 seconds will be given to you, competitors, to review your question. So I ask the junior minister from the Cayman Islands to please open an envelope. I'll be answering question three. With the number of tourists that come to our island on a daily basis, there is an indirect amount of destruction that occurs in our natural environment. And there are ways that we can prevent this. The first way being um, to inform tourists on coral reef safety and allow them to be conscious on the damage they can inflict by interacting with a coral reef. So how they do it in an efficient way, but also safe way. Secondly, Letting our tourists know where our, um, where our recycling resources are so that they can participate in those while they stay. And lastly, coming up with some kind of way our tourists can help clean up the beaches and know where they're throwing their trash. Thank you. Ms. Tomnika, may you open your envelope, please? I'll be answering question number two. Imagine landing in Dominica for the first time. So much to see, so much to experience, and you don't know where to start. Well, go to one of our pop-up locations where you can experience all of our culture, such as music, art, and food. At our pop-up locations, located at almost every tourist destination on the island, you can visit to see some of our local artists, or you could see some of our local art or food, and you can try all of these. Or you can get a portrait by one of our artists, or listen to music by WCK, the creators of the genre known as Booyah Music. Thank you. The Junior Minister of Tourism for Grenada. Here's question number one. Grenada, pure Grenada, the spice of the Caribbean, has many things to do, many things to see, and so much to experience. And of course, we all want re rejuvenation and wellness. And in Grenada, imagine going to the sulfur springs, 
enjoying a beautiful, relaxing, and calming bathing, and spreading the all-natural soil on your skin to rejuvenate yourself, to make your skin feel smooth and make you feel young again. Then, the next day, you hear about Granatang, Granans Beach. You go to Granans Beach and the first thing you notice, the white sands and the blue waters. You explore and you swim as you note the, ma the marine protected areas and the beautiful, beautiful palm trees and the friendly locals. Next, you explore Grandatang, one of our most important places in Grenada in terms of our wildlife and our health. You explore and you walk along the, you walk along the mountains, you look at the trees and you look over Granatang Lake, exploring as you, as you take in the all natural scenic view. Thank you very much, Mr. Grenada. Moving right on, Ms. Jamaica, please open your envelope. Question one. Jamaica, the land of wood and water. Wellness involves the collection of both the body, the mind, and the soul. Three products that we could implement for the improvement of our wellness sector is one, showing videos to our tourists at customs at the airport so they can see what they're actually getting into before they actually get into the hotels. Two, the jamming exercise. No, wellness isn't only about relaxation. It's all about rejuvenation and bringing your body back on track. In hotels, an interactive physical tutorial each night. And thirdly, Rebel Salute, a festival held every January in Jamaica, where we bring in herbs, we bring in oils, and we let the people know what we are all about. We are the land of wood and water. Out of many one people, come and be rejuvenated right here in Jamaica. Thank you. Thank you very much, Junior Minister of Tourism from, from Jamaica. And we shall now continue with the Commissioner of Tourism from Martinique. Please open your envelope. When the visitors will come to Martinique, they will be tired after their long trip, so they will need to recover. So what better than local tea tasting at in the airport to help them relax? Then nutrition classes with, of course, local, uh, local products that will help them to know what they can drink and what they can eat. And last but not least, relaxation with music, but local music, begin, mazurka, ballet, so that the tourists can, can discover our culture and can relax at the same time because every little detail in Martinique can make a big difference. Thank you. Thank you, Junior Commissioner. Moving right on, we shall have the Junior Minister of Tourism from Nevis to open his envelope, please. I will be answering question two. Queen City Nevis is home to many firsts, such as the Bath Hotel, which was the first hotel built in the Caribbean. Here, the plantation owners would go and relax back in the 1700s. We are also home to the first church that slaves and plantation owners could worship together, the Cottle Church. And also, we are home to the Hermitage Hotel, which is the oldest wooden structure built in the Caribbean. And those are three special elements of my country that I think can be a package to all of our tourists. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nevis. Ms. St. Lucia, could you please open up your envelope? I will be answering question number two. We are currently in the month of October, and in St. Lucia, that is Creole Heritage Month, and on the 17th is the La Marguerite Festival. I would incorporate both the La Marguerite Festival in October and the La Wars Festival in August in two events in these parts of the year. At these events, we would experience the flower festivals in a more heightened way. We would also include our country's theater and really bring out the dramatic arts that we can use to display the kings, the queens, the dukes, the duchesses of the festival. We would also, of course, have the St. Lucian food, the bouillard, the green fig, and salt fish, all of that, especially during Creole Heritage Month, bringing together our theater and performing arts, our delicious food, especially during Creole Heritage Month, 
and our flower festivals would really bring out my country, St. Lucia's special cultural elements. Thank you. Thank you, Miss St. Lucia. Will the Junior Minister of Tourism from St. Eustatius please open up his hand? I am answering question three. On my island of St. Eustatius, there are very, there are a lot of historic architectures from the 17th and 1800th. So as visitors come and visit my island, I plead with them to please respect those monuments that have stood there from, that have stood there for a time so other visitors can come and witness them as they did. And please recycle the foils and plastic you bring, in, or you bring on the island. And please do not feed the local wildlife anything that you wouldn't feed yourself. Thank you. Thank you, St. Eustatius. Will the Junior Minister of Tourism from St. Kitts please open his video? I will be answering question number two. We in the region, and specifically in St. Kitts, must ensure that we continue to make strategic plans and the requisite investments to ensure that tourism remains the key economic driver of our island. Three special elements that I would want to package to other tourists are a music fest where you can come and listen to international, regional, and local artists that are brought in to perform at this event. Brimstone Hill being a national heritage site, I'm sorry, a world heritage site that most people know about, come and learn about our history that we have there on the island that has been kept preserved for a decent amount of time. Now, Sugar Mass, our national carnival, this shows the culture and brings out the real, true nature of St. Kitts that shows the authentic and cultural life that we display. This shows the how beneficial these three elements can be to package to tourists. Thank you, Junior Minister of Tourism from St. Kitts. So now we shall have the Junior Minister of Tourism from St. Martin open up the envelope. I'll be answering question number three. One, keep the area clean on St. Martin. Everywhere in St. Martin is a recycling bin, so please use them. Two, our brown pelican, our national bird, where they can touch them, of course, but please do not endanger them because they are significant of how friendly we are on St. Martin. Also, our attractions, which are new, like the zip line. Please do not damage anything there because at the same time, the zip line is situated on our cultural heritage, which is Emilia Wilson's Park. Thank you. Thank you, Miss St. Martin. Now I'll have Mr. St. Martin open up his envelope, please. I will be answering number one, our question number one. Tourism is very, something very important. Tourists are often come to St. Martin because of our friendliness and our hospitality. Three activities I would con invite the tourists to go to, to, have, to reju rejuvenate and relax would be the zip line in Emilio Winston Park on the Dutch side, pick paradise where they can have the zip line as well, hike in the rainforest, then relax at the pool, and relax at Maho Beach where they can be on the beach and watch the planes come in as they land at Princess Juliana International Airport. I thank you for listening. Thank you, Mr. St. Martin. Moving right on. I will be answering question number two. Three special elements of, this cu of the culture of St. Vincent and the Grenadines that I would like visitors to indulge in are number one, our carnival where visitors can parade the streets of Kingstown in flamboyant costumes and experience authentic Vincentian music. Secondly, I, in I invite our visitors to enjoy the Independence Parade, which is held in Victoria Park in Kingstown, the capital of St. Vincent. Lastly, I would like visitors to enjoy Nine Mornings, which is a festival only celebrated in St. Vincent and the Grenadines held nine mornings before Christmas in several communities around the country where there are performances by villagers and sing singing and dancing. I thank you. Thank you, St. Vincent. Our penultimate presenter, Tobago, please open up your envelope. I'll be answering question number three. Number, I'll be answering question number one. 
According to question number one, I formulated three possible wellness events that could contribute to tourism. The first idea I came up with was a wellness hike. We have the oldest protected rainforest in the Western Hemisphere, and we must utilize this to bring comfort to our stories. Over 100 species of butterflies and two, over 200 species of local birds, they will enjoy the amazing flora and fauna of this rainforest. Second is food. The Blue Food Festival gives tourists to enjoy our food in Tobago and to taste local exquisites and to divulge in our cultural heritage as it has to do with food. And the third thing I came up with is what is coming to Tobago without experiencing our music? which will present the opportunity for the Jazz Festival. The Jazz Festival gives you the opportunity to divulge as you listen to the amazing singers as the saxophones comfort your heart as you are there listening to our Caribbean singers. These three festivals will definitely contribute to the growth of our rejuvenation. Thank you very much. And thank you, Tobago. And finally, the Junior Minister of Tourism for Ticks and Kickers, Dr. Maskam, please open your envelope. I will be answering question number three. In the Turks and Caicos Islands, our visitors' safety is our number one priority. As a result, if you want to be a responsible visitor to the Turks and Caicos Islands, you must participate in our disaster drills that are mandatory by all hoteliers. Secondly, you must make use of the biodegradable materials that are provided to you by our hotels. And last but not least, you must dispose of your garbage properly. These three initiatives will make you an ideal visitor to our beautiful Turks and Caicos Islands. Thank you. Thank you very much, my colleagues. That was a very informative and interesting meeting. So now I will turn this session over to CTO. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please give our junior ministers and commissioner of tourism and our chairman another hearty round of applause, please. A wonderful job by all. Our dear colleague Benita would have been absolutely proud of all of that you've done today. I now invite the judges to leave the room to deliberate. I do not envy you. Do not, do not. They certainly have their job cut out for them. At this time, I wish to invite our chairman, Mr. Francis Alexander, to share with us how he spent his year as Junior Minister of Tourism for St. Lucia. Francis? I'd like to say good morning to everybody. Good morning, good morning to the colleagues once again. October 10, 2017 was labeled as the happiest day in the history of my secondary school life. After months of hard work, dedication, trials, and strict discipline, I managed to gain the title of Caribbean Junior Minister of Tourism in Grenada. Such an accomplishment has opened many doors of opportunity for me in the past year, and I believe if I am to continue on a steady path, it may even open more in the future. During the time interval between last year's Congress, Congress sorry, and today's present, I have been involved in a few programs and activities in my country. I was invited to be a guest speaker at one or two graduations, as well as a master of ceremony for the Peter Management Agency's project lunch, the agency responsible for our World Heritage Site. My personal favorite was when I was an intern at two hotels during the summer. That was a tiring experience, but it was totally worth it. it I was actually involved in the whole tourism business. I had one-on-one -on -one interactions with tourists, getting to see their different point of views, and I had the privilege of receiving a bit of information and knowledge from many departments in the hotel. There is a saying which goes like this. No man is an island, right? No man is an island. And I would not have received these privileges if I didn't win the competition which was planned and organized by the CTO committee. So this morning, I say thank you to the CTO committee for the opportunity for showcasing my talent in speaking. Also, 
to Miss Samantha Charles, who chaperoned me, Miss Lyra Dormant, Miss Charlene Chaudhry, and Miss Yvonne Barthelme, who trained me for my national competition, and Mr. Kirk Elliott, who aided in my preparation for the regional contribution, as well as my parents, who ensured that I had all essentials for travel. I would like to extend a big, hearty thank you to all. You have my deepest gratitude. Please help me thank them. Also on behalf, uh, sorry, on, also on the same breath, on behalf of my former junior colleagues and St. Lucia, I would like to sympathize with the CTO committee on the passing of Miss Bonita Morgan. I see may she rest in peace. Well, they say that all good things must come to an end. In the next few minutes or so, I will be passing on my title to one of you guys here. To the winner, wait, no, not the winner, let me rephrase this. I'll be passing on my title to the winner who managed to rack up the most points this morning in this competition. You know why? Because all of you here are winners. Imagine you winning on a national scale. I mean, winning in your school, being chosen for your school is already a lot. But to win nationally, that's a great accomplishment. That's a great accomplishment. So to encourage you, I say, it's okay if you don't place in the top three. Just the experience of coming to the Bahamas is sufficiently rewarding. Trust me, many are envious. So, welcome to the Bahamas. Enjoy it while you can. So to the future Caribbean junior minister, this is just a stepping stone to help you achieve even greater things in life. So good luck on your future endeavors, my, few, my fellow junior ministers. Thank you. Francis, Mr. Francis Alexander, our chairman. We want to wish you all the best in your future endeavors and to say a big thank you for so competently chairing today's meeting. Thank you. We did not have an easy job in that back room, I gotta tell you. So um, we didn't agree on everything. We had some discussions, but um, one of the things or a few of the things that I hope will be useful to you in representing your countries uh, moving forward is that when you're making your cases, we really want you to back up uh, your information with facts, uh, you know, references, things like that. Some of you did that very, very well. Um, we want you to recognize what's unique about your destination. Sometimes we heard about uh, a jazz festival, or, and I love jazz festivals, but you know, jazz festivals have international artists, which you can see in New York or somewhere else. If it's unique to your destination, great, that's what we want to hear about. Zip lines you can do everywhere in the world, you know, but we want to hear about what's unique about your culture and your destination. We also want to hear about um, destination-wide solutions. Uh, a lot of these solutions that were presented talked about uh, resort-specific things and not things that were necessarily relevant to the entire destination. But uh, with that said, uh, every single one of this group, I think better than any other prior year that I've seen, uh, had a level of sophistication, confidence in the presentations that we've never seen. So again, thank you very much. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Sharon to uh, announce our winners. Great, thank you judges once again. Um, and now here's the moment we've all been waiting for, results, results, results. I'm going to ask now um, the Secretary General and the CEO at the Caribbean Tourism Organization, Mr. Hugh Riley, to join us on the stage to help us with the presentation of prizes. Okay, our third prize 
goes to the Junior Minister of Tourism for, sorry, the Commissioner of Tourism for Martinique. <laughs> Ms. Coraline Pin. Thank you very much, and congratulations, Coraline. Our second prize goes to the Junior Minister of Tourism from St. Martin, Ms. Chiara Mayers. Congratulations, Chiara. And ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Tourism Youth Congress 2018 is the Junior Minister of Tourism of Jamaica, Miss Brianna Hilton. Mr. Rally, you know you're not allowed to leave. <laughs> no, yes, please go. Please go. It's a group photo, yeah. Martinique is coming. Christelle. We have one more representative coming up. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the 16th Annual Tourism Youth Congress. We hope that you found it enlightening, and we look forward to seeing you next year.